Hello, I'm Dr. Lorna Brown, Professor of Radiology and one of the directors of Cardiac Imaging here at Children's Hospital Colorado. And I'm Dr. Richard Friesen, Assistant Professor of Pediatrics and a Pediatric Cardiologist. We're here to talk about fetal cardiac MRI, the latest innovation in congenital heart disease diagnosis and imaging which we're pioneering here at Children's Hospital Colorado. For expecting parents learning the terrifying news that your prenatal ultrasound scans suggest that your unborn child may have a serious heart problem can be understandably overwhelming and emotional, filling them with many questions and a search for more information, clarity, and understanding of what that may mean. In most hospitals, the next step will involve a consultation with fetal cardiology at an expert center like Children's Colorado, where a special ultrasound of the fetal heart known as a fetal echocardiogram or fetal echo will try to evaluate the fetal heart and vessels to reach a final diagnosis. In most cases, a fetal echo is sufficient to provide a clear diagnosis. However, there are many cases where it can be challenging to see all the heart and vessels, particularly in the later gestation, to provide that clear diagnosis. Also, because of the unique nature of the blood flow through and around the fetal heart before they are born, there are certain diagnoses such as coarctation of the aorta, which is a narrowing of the main blood vessel going to the body, where it can be challenging to completely be sure whether it will be normal or require a surgery after birth, even with the best fetal echocardiogram. This gray area is difficult for both parents and us as providers as we seek to provide the clearest information to help know what to expect before the child is born. Here at Children's Colorado, we are exploring with excellent results so far how MRI can be used in addition to fetal echo to improve the accuracy of fetal heart disorders. Fetal MRI is an excellent way to better see unborn babies. It is safe for both the moms and babies, does not involve any injections or radiation, and can show the fetal organs in much greater detail than ultrasound. Moms have been having MRIs during pregnancy safely for over 20 years to look at baby's brain and body in greater detail than ultrasound. In the past, evaluating the fetal heart with MRI has been very difficult because babies move and baby's heart beats so fast inside mom we weren't able to see it well. However, in the last few years we've been using a special ultrasound machine that detects the fetal heartbeat and allows us to take a series of really quick images of the fetal heart so we can see the baby's heart clearly as the heart is beating. This improves the diagnosis of heart defects because we see a lot of things with MRI that you can't with ultrasound. The fetal cardiac MRI takes about 40 minutes with the mom lying in the scanner in their most comfortable position with a flat ultrasound probe on the mom's tummy that tracks the baby's heartbeat. We usually try to take the MRI pictures at about 30 to 36 weeks of pregnancy, when the baby is a bit bigger and moves a bit less, but while moms are still comfortable lying down in the scanner. We've been doing fetal cardiac MRI at Children's Hospital Colorado for four years, and over that time we have discovered that we can get really important information that can accurately diagnose baby's heart conditions and distinguish them from normal better than echo alone. We present an example case of two expectant mothers given the potential diagnosis of coarctation of the aorta by fetal echocardiogram. As this diagnosis requires close monitoring and surgery in the first week after birth, babies with suspected coarctation are recommended to deliver at a tertiary care center like the Colorado Fetal Care Center. This may require relocation to Denver after 36 weeks gestation and delivery and care away from their original OB. Postnatally, these babies are transferred very soon after birth to the cardiac intensive care unit with placement of IVs and central lines while undergoing further evaluation to confirm or exclude the diagnosis of coarctation of the aorta. Given the concern for this diagnosis, perinatal management errs on the side of caution for delivery planning to keep the baby safe with extra monitoring and procedures. However, prenatal diagnosis of coarctation of the aorta carries up to a 50% false positive rate by echocardiography alone, which means that many babies end up in an ICU right after birth with extra medical tests who don't actually need it. We can use fetal cardiac MRI to get really high quality moving images of all the fetal heart chambers, even as they're moving very quickly. By getting such detailed cine images, we can get really accurate measurements of the size and function of the baby's heart and correct them for the actual size of the baby so we can stratify the baby's heart size and function compared to other babies of the same weight. Additionally, we get 3D images of the baby's heart and vessels. 
seeing the anatomy in three dimensions really improves the ability to detect problems that arise in the connections of baby's heart and vessels and represents a big advantage of fetal cardiac MRI over fetal echo. Another thing we can get with fetal cardiac MRI is something called 4D flow. This technique looks at the amount and direction of flow in all the vessels in a baby's body. It's really groundbreaking to be able to do this in the fetus. In fact, we are one of the few sites in the world where we can do this 4D flow technique in a fetus. 4D flow really adds to the evaluation because by measuring where and how blood flows through and around the heart, we can tell how mild or severe an abnormality may be. Our research work shows that this additional flow information can also really help fill in the missing piece in a difficult diagnosis, allowing us to make really accurate prenatal diagnoses, even in challenging cases. We know that all babies come in different sizes, even at similar gestational ages, so a crucial factor in interpreting the information we get from 40 flow and fetal cardiac MRI is being able to understand what it means for each individual baby, and that means estimating the baby's weight. Our team has helped develop a cutting edge technique leveraging machine learning and artificial intelligence to segment a 3D model of the baby to estimate that weight, turning what previously was a time consuming process into a fast automated process, which speeds up the clinical workflow, allowing us to understand the information much faster. This is an example of a 3D print that we got from one of our fetal cardiac MRIs. It shows you the baby segmented from our images with the 4D flow MRI within it gives an example of the detail that we can get from fetal cardiac MRI and also the scale which we are dealing with. At the moment we are using fetal cardiac MRI with chamber size and function, 3D anatomy and 4D flow to improve diagnosis in some babies with complex heart disease so we can give moms and families the most accurate prenatal diagnoses. Earlier we brought up the challenges in diagnosis of coarctation of the aorta. Our research so far has shown that this anatomic 3D visualization, as well as full evaluation of the blood flow by 4D flow MRI, greatly improves accuracy of prenatal diagnosis. This allows moms and families to be fully informed as to what to expect going into delivery, and also allows our neonatal doctors and pediatric cardiology colleagues to be fully prepared for what might happen in the delivery room and after delivery. More accurate diagnosis of congenital heart disease allows you to really help prepare moms and families for what is going to happen after birth, allowing time to prepare and better understand their baby's condition. On the other side, one of the really nice things is we have been able to give some moms really wonderful news based on the MRI. The additional information provided by the fetal cardiac MRI has provided reassurance that either the heart is normal or the diagnosis is less severe, which has allowed babies to stay with their moms after delivery with more routine and individualized monitoring based on that extra imaging. So going back to our tale of two expectant moms, based on the fetal cardiac MRI, we were able to be sure that one fetus did indeed have a severe coarctation. This allowed clear prenatal counseling for the parents to better know what to expect after their baby is born. After this baby was born, they were monitored closely and safely until the baby underwent a successful repair and was able to go home. The other fetus was felt to have a normal fetal cardiac MRI and was felt to not have a coarctation. This changed the counseling and delivery planning and after birth, the baby stayed with their mom in her delivery suite and on day three, both went home together with a clean bill of health. It's very rewarding to be involved in being able to provide this kind of relief or reassurance to moms and families. This story of two expectant moms represents the true story behind many moms who have enrolled in our coarctation study, where to date we have found using these fetal cardiac MRI techniques, we can greatly improve the specificity of diagnosis compared to using echo alone. Our findings here show the exciting promise of fetal cardiac MRI to improve accuracy of prenatal diagnosis, keep babies with moms when conservative care is an option, and optimize the use of critical care resources when they're needed for the babies who do need intensive care after delivery, but eliminate the use of unnecessary resources and healthcare costs for the babies who don't. Behind the scenes, we are really lucky to have an amazing team of experts who are working on exciting methods of acquiring images of the baby's heart in faster ways and minimizing the blurring effects that can occur if the baby moves during acquisition. This means we will soon be able to perform these MRIs faster and in smaller babies who might move a bit more. 
Our team recently published the first paper establishing normal reference values for fetal heart volumes and function by cardiac MRI, which is essential for helping us understand normal and abnormal findings by fetal MRI. We are also continuing to expand our understanding of how fetal cardiac MRI can help in more complex types of heart disease, as well as exploring how fetal cardiac MRI can be used in other disorders such as congenital diaphragmatic hernia to better assess the effect this condition has on a baby's heart. We are optimistic we may be able to better predict how the heart may function after these babies are born. We have found that using fetal cardiac MRI increases accuracy of prenatal diagnosis of congenital heart disease improves the prenatal counselling of moms and families about their baby's conditions and the effects on delivery. And when interventions are necessary, we can help determine the procedures that might be necessary after birth. We believe that fetal cardiac MRI will transform fetal cardiac care going forward, and at Children's Hospital Colorado, we are on the forefront of that transformation. If you are interested in learning more, are interested in participating as a volunteer in one of our research projects, or know someone who might be, please reach out to Richard and I through the email address on the slide. Thank you very much for listening.